Okay, so let's have a look at an interesting phenomenon here where if you're integrating a certain function, doing an indefinite integral like this, if you integrate it one way, you might get a certain constant plus c. And if you integrate it using a different method, you might get a certain constant plus c dash. And these two constants might be slightly different. So let's have a look at what's going on here through an example. So first example we will look at is just the integral of x plus 1 all squared. So for this indefinite integral, first method we can do, all we'll do here is expand the brackets. So you get x squared plus 2x plus 1 dx. And then we integrate this, you get x cubed over 3 plus x squared plus x plus some constant. And then what we'll do next is we'll use a slightly different method. We'll use a substitution. So u equals x plus 1 substitution. And this is going to turn our integral into we're integrating x plus 1 all squared. So this just becomes u squared du. So you know that du equals dx. And then all that happens here is this becomes u cubed over 3 plus some other constant c dash. And of course what we need to do now is rewrite this in terms of x. So it becomes x plus 1 all cubed over 3 plus c dash. It's not immediately obvious that these two are even equivalent, but if we expand the brackets here, I get x cubed over 3, and then plus you'll have 3x squared over 3 plus 3x over 3 plus 1 third plus c dash. And you'll see here your 3s are going to cancel here and here. So you see that this does actually match up x cubed over 3, x squared, x. And then here you've got c, and here you've actually got a third plus this c dash constant, this new one. So what's actually going on here is basically we're integrating some function and what we're doing here really is we're answering this question. So for example here we're answering the question, what can you differentiate to get x plus 1 all squared? So here it's what can you differentiate to get small f of x? And this doesn't have a unique solution. You can always add a constant to any kind of solution function you've got there. But what's going on here with having a slightly different constant depending on the method you use, it's not that you have a different constant, but it's actually that you're f of x is slightly different. So here, what I've written isn't entirely accurate. This probably ought to be f of x, and then plus c minus c dash. So this capital F, this function, is unique, other than you can add, subtract constants from it. So if you see here, this is kind of our f of x, x cubed over 3 plus x squared plus x, whereas here, this is also our capital F of x, just plus one third. Now for our second example, we're going to have a look at the integral of sine 2x dx. And I'm going to show you three different methods to integrate this, and they're all going to give slightly different constants. So method one, this is just very simple antiderivative. You spot the sine of 2x. This is, when you integrate this, you'll have a half cos minus a half cos 2x plus some constant c. Okay, so that one, nice and straightforward. You just sort of spot what to do there. Um, the next two methods, we're going to use the double angle formula for sine. So method two, integral of sine 2x with respect to x. We split this up into the integral 2 sine x cos x with respect to x. And then we're going to use a substitution here. So what we'll do first of all is we'll do u equals sine x as a substitution. And then method 3 we're going to do u equals cos x. So here du dx this is equal to cos x. So du equals cos x dx, which is very nice. 
because then convex dx just becomes du. u equals sine x replaces the sine x there, so this becomes the integral of 2u du, which equals u squared plus c dash. And then we just rewrite this in terms of u. Uh, instead of u, we write it in terms of x. So this is sine squared of x plus this new constant, c prime. So we've got two quite different looking things, but these are equivalent up to a constant. We'll have a look at what the differences between each constant are in a sec. So that's method one, method two done. So for method three, but we'll start with the u equals, instead of sine x, u equals cos x substitution. So du dx equals minus sine x, so du equals minus sine x dx. Okay? And then we'll plug this into the integral. So the integral is the integral of 2 sine x cos x respect to x. So we've got a sine here, the dx, these get replaced by minus du and then the 2 cos x becomes 2u. So this becomes integral minus 2u du. Perhaps I could have used a different letter here because I've already used u. Don't worry about that. We get minus u squared plus a new constant c dash dash. And then we substitute in u equals cos x here to write this in terms of x. So this gives us minus cos squared x plus this new constant c dash dash. So what we've got now is we've actually managed to get three different expressions all with slightly different constants. And you can compare your constants here using various trig identities so you know sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. And then you can also use your double angle formula for cos so you know cos 2x there's three different ways you can write this. Write it as cos squared x minus sine squared x, for example. And you can work out what your constants are here in terms of each other. But you can show that this third constant, so where we've done the u equals cos x substitution, this plus 1, this is equal to our original constant, plus a half. And then you can show that this is equal to this constant. So all three of them are slightly different. So this is kind of our biggest constant and then this one is a half smaller and then this one is a half smaller than that. So this third example is going to actually lead us to quite an interesting identity. So I'll show you the first method is very straightforward. What I'm going to do with method one is multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by x squared. So first thing we'll do is multiply this by x squared, you just get 1. Multiply 1 by x squared, you'll get an x squared. And then multiply this 1 over x squared by x squared gives you 1. And then we see this. This is a very familiar integral in disguise. This is just arctan of x plus some constant c. So method 2, let's imagine we didn't spot that this was an arctan integral in disguise. And perhaps we tried substitution. So what we might be interested to try here is actually u equals 1 over x. Because if you notice du by dx then, this would be equal to minus 1 over x squared. So du, this would be equal to minus 1 over x squared dx. And then this sort of structure here, the 1 over x squared dx, this is part of your integral here. So this will cancel out very, very nicely. So let's write this out properly. So then you get integral 1 over x squared over 1 plus 1 over x squared dx. Then we change variables using u substitution. We will get, so the 1 over x squared dx cancels. This just gives us minus 1 
over 1 plus. And then 1 over x squared is nice, that's just u squared du. And then, of course, this is very similar to before, we get now negative arctan u plus some other constant. And then, of course, we want to write this in terms of x, so negative arctan of 1 over x plus this new constant. And this is actually quite surprising here because negative arctan of 1 over x is this equal to arctan of x or equal to arctan of x plus some constant? Well, we can actually show this and to do that we'll consider a right angle triangle here with opposite side x and your adjacent side 1, this angle theta. So you know that tan theta is equal to x over 1. So theta equals arctan x over 1 is just x. Okay? But then if we have a look at the same triangle, but now from a different perspective, if we look at this angle here, which is going to be 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians minus theta, then we know that tan of this, so tan pi over 2 minus theta is equal to, now this is equal to 1 over x, and then you get pi over 2 minus theta is equal to arctan 1 over x, and then Notice here we're comparing arctan of x with minus arctan of 1 over x, so do theta, and if we multiply by minus 1, theta minus pi over 2 equals minus arctan 1 over x. And then here, if we cancel this, we'll add theta over 2 to both sides. So what we've shown here then is minus arctan of 1 over x plus pi over 2 is equal to arctan of x, at least this is when x is positive. So notice here, when we have negative arctan of 1 over x, this isn't well defined when x is 0, so we have to sort of avoid a neighbourhood of 0. Um, but what we can do now is we can sort of use this, so you know that this is equal to, you know, minus arctan of 1 over x plus pi over 2 is equal to arctan of x. So we know that arctan of x plus c is equal to minus arctan 1 over x plus pi over 2 plus c and then we'll see that this well, this pi over 2 plus c this is equal to our c dash so what we've shown is therefore c dash is equal to pi over 2 plus c at least when x is greater than 0 and if x is less than 0, this identity doesn't quite work, I and mean, you certainly can't prove it with a negative sine length, side length on your triangle. But when x is less than 0, I'll go over here now. So instead of having, here we've got theta equals arctan, theta equals minus arctan, 1 over x plus pi over 2. We have a slightly different identity, which you can show when x is negative, so arctan of x, this is now equal to minus arctan 1 over x. Instead of adding pi over 2, you subtract pi over 2. So in this case, you would get c dash equals minus pi over 2 plus c, where x is less than 0. So you can actually get out some very interesting identities as a result of looking at these kind of integrals where you do it different ways and get a different expression with a different constant. So here, looking at this integral, this is kind of a pseudo-proof that leads you to actually showing that arctan of x, this is the same as negative arctan 1 over x plus pi over 2. So for our fourth and final example, we're going to have a look at this nice integral now in two different ways. So the first method is going to be a substitution. So if you look carefully at this, 
probably want to get rid of this 1 over x squared term. And if you were to set u equals 1 over x squared, this is particularly nice because then du dx, this is minus 2 over x cubed. So this is, you've got a 2 and an x cubed dx here. So lots of stuff's going to cancel. So you get du equals minus 2 over x cubed dx. So then we can rewrite our integral as, so first of all, 2 over x cubed, 1 over x squared, plus 1 squared dx. So we'll just show here what's going to happen here. So your 2, your x cubed, your dx, these are all going to disappear and become minus du. And then this 1 over x squared is u. So what you'll end up with is minus 1 over u plus 1 whole squared du. And then what we can do here, just to make this really clear how this one works, is you can replace u by v. So you set v equal u plus 1, and you've got dv equals du. So then the integral is going to be equal to integral minus 1 over v squared dv. And that's really easy to work this one out. This is just 1 over v plus some constant c. Then, of course, what we're going to do next is rewrite this all in terms of x. So two steps here. First of all, we replace our v by u. So v is u plus 1. So 1 over u plus 1 plus some constant c. And then, remember, v, we've replaced that by u. And now we need to replace u by x. So u is equal to 1 over x squared. So you get 1 over 1 over x squared plus 1 plus some constant c. And then just to tidy things up here, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by x squared in this fraction. So x squared over 1 plus x squared plus some constant c. So this is our first solution using the first method here. So for the next method, we're going to use basically this kind of trick here where you multiply the top and the bottom by x squared to tidy up. Let's imagine we didn't immediately see this first substitution. So for the second method, we start to tidy things up from the beginning. So this integral, if we multiply the top and the bottom, actually going to multiply this by x to the power of 4, you'll get 2x to the 4, and then divided by x cubed into, so we take the x to the power of 4 into this bracket, you'll end up with x squared, because this is all being squared, times by 1 over x squared plus 1. This is all squared dx. And then here, your 1 over x squared, this cancels with your x squared, and then this one gets multiplied by x squared, so that gives you an x squared term. Of course, your x to the 4 and your x cubed, lots of that's going to cancel. So you end up with integral of 2x over 1 plus x squared squared dx. So this still isn't quite possible to immediately solve this, but what we'll do is another substitution here. So if I let w be 1 plus x squared, and this is nice because then dw equals 2x dx. So you've got your 2x here, you've got your dx here. This is just going to get replaced by dw. And then this will become 1 over w squared. So 1 over w squared dw. And then we can solve this. This is really simple. This becomes minus 1 over w plus some new constant c dash. So remember, w is 1 plus x squared. So if we want to write this in terms of x, this now becomes minus 1 over 1 plus x squared plus our new constant c dash. So this is our second form of the integral now. And like in some of the other examples we've seen, this is not immediately obvious that these two are even equivalent, but we can show that they are. So Let's set them equal to each other. So x squared over 1 plus x squared plus c. 
imagine this is equal to minus 1 over 1 plus x squared plus z dash. Let's add 1 over 1 plus x squared to both sides of this. So then what we'll get is 1 over 1 plus x squared plus x squared over 1 plus x squared plus c. And then we've added 1, plus, uh, 1 over 1 plus x squared to this, so this just becomes 0. This equals c dash. And then hopefully you can see here you've got 1 plus x squared over 1 plus x squared. So all of this term here, this is just equal to 1. So we end up with 1 plus c equals c dash. So this is the relationship between the two constants here. So this one's quite nice. It's subtle that actually x squared over 1 plus x squared. This is just equal to 1 minus 1 over 1 plus x squared. So that's why this function and this function are related to each other. So this is another really nice, interesting example actually where you do the integral in two different ways and you get two different functions and then you sort of discover there's some kind of identity here. So x squared over 1 plus x squared, this is related to minus 1 over 1 plus x squared. So if you do other integration problems in different ways, you may uncover some other identities that aren't immediately obvious.